Hi, in this module we will study pests and diseases for potato. We first start with diseases. The first disease that we will study is called early blight. Early blight is a fungal disease caused by Alternaria solani. The occurrence of early blight is such that first Early blight is more common than late blight and it can occur anywhere at any time period. The next we study is appearance and damage caused by early blight. As we can see the images on the screen, brown to black spots with concentric rings are scattered on the leaves. Their number is numerous and they are scattered all over the leaves. Heavily infested leaves or heavily infected leaves fall off after drying. Spots also appear on stems. How do we manage early blight? There are two control measures for early blight. First is crop debris should invariably be destroyed by burning after harvest. This means that once earlier crop is harvested, then whatever crop debris is left in the land, it should be burned off. And then the crop after plantation should be sprayed with trophy at the rate of 400 grams per acre to control this disease. The second disease to study is late blight. It is a fungal disease caused by Phytothera infestans. The occurrence of late blight is such that it can also occur anywhere at any time period, but it is more prevalent 30 days after the crop has been transplanted. 30 days DAT implies 30 days after transplantation that is moving them from the nursery to the main bed. The appearance and damage caused by late blight is such that the spots of this disease on the leaves are brown to black. Dark spots often merge to give leaf a burning appearance. The number of these spots are numerous and are scattered all over the leaves. Once the leaves become heavily infected, they fall off after drying. How do we manage late blight? Let's look at the control measures of late blight. There are two ways of controlling late blight. We need to destroy all remaining residue after harvesting. We need to destroy this residue by burning it. And the second control measure is that it is recommended that we apply trophy at the rate of 400 grams and this trophy is applied by spraying on the crops. The third disease is called black scurf. It is a fungal disease caused by Rhizoctonia solani. Where does black scurf occur? This disease, which is black scurf, is of common occurrence both in the hills and the plains. What is the appearance of black scurf and what is the damage it causes? There are two phases of this disease. In stem canker phase, the sprouts are killed before they emerge. This delays germination and results in a loss of yield. The cankers may cause wilting of the plants as well. The black scurf is recognized by the black crust on the tuber which reduces the acceptability of the potatoes to the consumer. How do we manage the damage caused by black scurf? There are variety of control measures to control black scurf. One is to plant healthy tubers. The seed tubers should be dipped in 0.5% suspension of aratan or agalol for 10 minutes. 
soil in which we plant potato can be treated with brassicol at the rate of 20 to 30 kgs per hectare combination of seed and soil treatment gives the best control of the disease the fourth disease that we will study is called bacterial wilt and brown rot it is a fungal disease caused by pseudomonas solana serum we can see the images of black wilt and brown rot on the screen where does bacterial wilt and brown rot occur this dreaded disease of potato is common in mid hills plateau region and west bengal what is the appearance of bacterial wilt and brown rot and what is the damage caused by them most common symptom of this disease is sudden wilting of the plant infected plants show droopy appearance and branches gradually turn bronze and die there is unusual browning of vascular bundles in the stems and tubers show a big brown ring inside as we can see in the image on the screen eyes of the tubers are also blackened how do we manage bacterial wilt and brown rot there are many ways to manage bacterial wilt and brown rot certified seeds free from diseases which is brown rot diseases should be planted in case cut potato tubers are being used they should be kept at 12 degrees celsius for four days or the cut surface hardens the tubers should also be treated with a solution of aratan or agagol spray of hexan 400 milliliter per acre with streptocycline 30 grams per acre are also recommended the crop debris should be collected and burned which means that the previous crop remains should be collected and burnt. The next disease is the wart disease. It is a fungal disease caused by Syncotrium endobioticum. We can see the warts images on the screen. Where does wart disease occur? This disease is found in Darjeeling Hills in West Bengal and its surrounding areas. What is the appearance of the wart disease and the damage it causes? The disease is recognized by the appearance on tubers, stotons and stems of the plant, the potato plant. And sometimes the whole tuber is converted into a distorted mass. How to manage wart disease? There are control measures. One is certified tubers free from wart disease should be planted. And second is to choose a variety which is wart immune and to plant that variety. We can see the wart images on the screen on the potato. The sprouts which have come out of the potato is called the wart disease. The next disease that we study is called mosaic disease. How does the mosaic disease spread? The mosaic disease is spread in the field by insects which carry the virus. What is the appearance and damage caused by the mosaic disease? There are different types of mosaic diseases that attack potato. The leaves show green and dark green mosaic patterns on leaves. The plants remain stunted and its pick ability becomes damaged. There might be a faint yellowing in the patches on the leaves. The plant remains stunted and sick. Size and the number of tubers is also reduced. In some mosaic diseases, the leaves are the main source of disease in the field. Mosaic. How do we manage? There are many control measures of mosaic. 
these are one we should choose seed tubers which are healthy and certified second is that when we have very small size tubers we should not plant them because they are likely to be from the diseased plant third is that the plants which are showing initial symptoms should be destroyed which means that we should inspect the field regularly and destroy the plants which are showing initial symptoms and the last control measure is to spray paramida at the rate of 200 ml per 200 l of water per acre at 10 to 15 days into well to check the occurrence of insects the last disease that we study is called leaf roll disease what is the appearance of leaf folder and what is the damage caused by leaf folder leaves show upward rolling on the margins towards mid ribs until the entire lamina is involved the leaves assure a rigid leathery texture having a characteristic rattle when brushed with hand the number of tubers per plant and their size is greatly reduced how do we manage leaf roll disease we should spray the crop with paramida at the rate of 100 ml per acre or folcor at the rate of 100 g per acre to avoid the disease of leaf roll next we study the pests which affect potato cultivation the first pest that we study is epilachna beetle epilachna beetle has many many features it is one of the most serious pests of a potato crop the baby of the pest is called grub and the grubs and adults both are the damaging stages of this insect this pest feeds on the foliage what is the appearance and damage caused by the epilachna beetle the grubs scrap away chlorophyll from the leaves leaving only the veins the grubs or larvae of these beetles are very sluggish and move very slowly while feeding on the leaves these are yellowish in color with erect spines on their body a severe infestation may cause a loss of up to 70% in yield epilachna beetle how to manage there are two control measures to manage epilachna beetle the first is spraying of xylo at the rate of 400 ml per 200 l per acre is quite effective second is dusting of methyl parathion at the rate of 12 kg per acre may also control the pest the next pest is called cutworms what is the appearance and damage caused by cutworms they may cut the twigs leaves or the entire potato plant above the surface they do more harm by cutting the plants than by actual feeding the next pest is called cutworms what is the appearance and damage caused by cutworms as you can see on the screens the cutworms they look like caterpillars and the damage is caused by the caterpillars by cutting off the growing potato they may cut twigs leaves or entire potato plant above the soil surface they do more harm by cutting the plants than by actual feeding the full grown caterpillars are about 5 cm long as we can see on the screen during day time they remain hiding in the soil and in the night time they damage the crop in later stage they also feed on the tubers and therefore they result in the reduction on the market value of potatoes cutworms how to manage there are various control measures for cutworm 
these are flooding the field flooding of the field that is greatly reduces the activity of the caterpillars alternatively we should spray the crops with prosip at the rate of 400 milliliter per acre that's the product you see on the left image and riper which is the product you see on the right at the rate of 100 grams per acre it is very effective application to control cutworms and lastly the use of carbosan 3g at the rate of 12 kg per acre at the time of sowing is also found very effective the next pest is aphids. They're small insects, as you see on the screen. Either pale yellow or slightly darker in color. The image on the right is darker. Both nymphs and adults damage the plant. They damage the plant by sucking the cell sap from the leaves, tender shoots and stem. The leaves of the attacked plant become yellowish. Therefore, they lose vitality. Besides this, aphids secrete honeydew on the leaves on which black mold appears or develops. This interferes in photosynthesis. The winged aphids also transmit serious viral disease in this crop. The most active time periods of aphids is from 1st November to 15th November. How to manage aphids? The control measures of aphids is that we spray the crops with fulcor at the rate of 100 milliliter per 200 liter of water. This application gives good results. The next pest is leaf hoppers. The nymphs and adults of this insect have piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. They suck the cell sap due to which leaves become yellow and plants lose their vitality. Besides the direct losses due to their feeding, leaf hoppers transmit viral diseases in potato which reduces the yield of the crop. Leaf hoppers also transmit viral diseases. Leaf hoppers, how to manage? The control measures of leaf hoppers include an application of carbosan 3G at the rate of 12 kgs per acre or forasan denji at the rate of 10 grams per acre and if the crop has advanced to a later stage then we should apply falcor at the rate of 100 milliliter per liter. The next pest is called white grub. The damage is mainly done by the grubs which remain in the soil. They damage the plant by feeding on the underground portion which is roots, stems and tubers. The grub in the early stage feeds on the root which results in the plant drying up. Later on when the tubers are developed the grubs cut holes in the tubers. The market value of such grubs is very reduced. White grub, how to manage? The control measures of white grub is to apply heptachlor 3% dust or aldrin 5% dust at the rate of 45 to 60 kgs per hectare in soil before growing or mixing it properly. We can also use Carbosan 3G or Forasan 10G at the rate of 12 kg per acre or Temic 10G at the rate of 15 kg per acre at the time of sowing. The last pest that we will study in this module is called Potato Tuber Moth. This is mainly a pest of stored potato but it causes damage in the standing crop also. The caterpillars mine the leaves causing patches in them. The damage done by the caterpillars to potato in stores is much more serious. The caterpillars are found inside the pulp. The tunnels made by the caterpillars are filled with excreta. Such tubers generally become unfit for human consumption and also for seed purposes. Potato tuber moth, how to manage? 
you can see the images of potato tuber moth on the screen and you can see the caterpillar is a small uh, gray uh, goldenish beetle or caterpillar with red eyes there are many control measures that can be taken to control potato tuber moth the first is that we should store a healthy crop potato should be stored in the cold store in case they are to be kept in the ordinary stores a layer of stand about 2.5 to 5 cm thick should be kept below and above the head of potato we can protect the seed by spraying 5% bttc dust or 1% malathion on and around the heap for crop care in potato the normal practice is dependent on the pest or disease that we are fighting with in case of late blight in potato besides seed treatment with yali which is mancozeb in 5% solution as much as 6% foliar sprays of yali mancozeb 6 grams per kg is practiced by the farmers for termites chloropyrifos which is chlorosan at the rate of 1 liter per acre mixed with 10 kg sand should be applied during last plowing to prevent the termite attack for sucking insects paramida or imida clofrid is applied at the rate of 200 ml per acre for cut worms 1 to 2 sprays of xylo which is a combination of chloro and cypher at the rate of 500 ml per acre is to be given by a spray of rifer which is imamustin benzoate at the rate of 100 grams per acre every 15 days to maximize potato cultivation or what are the tips of maximizing potato cultivation after second earthing up of 3 weeks there comes severe winters and green coloration of leaves decrease to increase production calnet which is calcium nitrate foliar spraying is done at the rate of 0.5% as the first spray The second spray is done after 7 days of the first spray for better yields. Use of potato cuttings with two or three eyes should be there for better growth. Seed treatment of potato cuttings with 0.5% yali which is mancozeb to avoid diseases. Potato time planting or potato planting time is very important. In our climate it is done from 1st November to 15th November for better production. Irrigation is done between two bonds so that only 2/3 of the channel is filled up. When mixed micronutrients is thoroughly mixed in soil during second top dressing production reasons. In the late sowing of potato foliar spray of potato at the rate of 0.1% urea gives better results for production cost of cultivation with standard package of potato in west bengal so this is the cost of cultivation with standard package of potato in west bengal plowings which is 3 in number for 3 hours is at 900 rupees per hour planting material which is tuber 2 budded is 4.5 grams per acre and so on and so forth so we have the different listings of the different packages which are required in potato in west bengal how do we harvest potato crop should be harvested when homes start yellowing and falling on the ground this is the last stage of potato cultivation at this stage homes should be removed at ground level the crop should be harvested about 15 days after cutting the homes Digging is done with spades or could be in the small fields. Suitable tractor operated potato digger should now be available for digging the potatoes in big fields. And there should be an optimum moisture in the soil at the time of harvest. The clocks hinder the efficient functioning of the potato digger. After digger the tuber may be allowed on the ground for something in shade. This is all we do in the cultivation of potato and pests and diseases of potato. But before we close the video, there's the last point of yield with recommended package of practices 
a yield of 300 to 400 quintals per hectare can be obtained. However, in the hills except lower valleys, the yields do not go beyond 250 quintals per acre. Thank you.